Um, good evening. We're going to be learning Masecha Shabbos Daf Kafav tonight. Uh, tonight we're going to be continuing um, discussing some of the oils that are fit for Shabbos or not fit for Shabbos. And then we're going to jump into a, um, a sugya of what is considered eligible for being the Kabbal Tuma in regards to clothing. We'll be learning um, two different shiurim. One is a three by three etzba. So this is going to be approximately the shape. It's three by three, very narrow. The other is three by three tzvachim, which is approximately a handkerchief size, about a foot by a foot. I guess we'll make better measure. Um, and uh, we'll discuss that for the second half of the Amud. And we're going to actually stop in the midst of that sugya um, as we get toward the bottom of Kav Vav Amud Beis. But in order to get started, we're going to be starting on the bottom of Kav Hey Amud Beis. We're starting at the two dots, approximately eight or nine lines from the bottom. I'll just repeat the last line we learned last night, which was about Ezu Asher Samech Bechelko. Actually, it is a little bit out of order, as we will soon see. It really should have been after the, um, the mnemonic that the Gemara presents. So last night we learned, Tan Rabbanon Ezehu Eze Asher Kol Shiesh Lo Nachatz Rech Be'osho Divrei Rabbi Meir. We learned that one who is considered wealthy is one who has Nachatz Ruach, who has a degree of contentment, with his wealth, whatever that may be, Divrei Reb Meir. And now look at the next word, Simen, Matkas, Mem Tes Kuf Samech, Meir, namely Rebbe Meir, which we already saw, so that's how I know that this is uh, presumably out of order. Uh, Tuf is Rebbe Tarfon, Kuf is Rebbe Akiva, and the Samech is a reference to Rebbe Yossi. And these are going to be the four shitas that we will see tonight in regards to Ezu Asher Samech Bechelko, and let's jump right uh, in with number two. We already saw Reb Meir, Nachas Ruch. Number two, Rabbi Tarfon, Omer, Kol she yesh lo mea kramim, u mea sados, u mea avadim she ovdin vahem. Someone who has a hundred vineyards and a hundred fields and a hundred slaves who serve him. That's uh, how he defines Ashirus. Um, each of these four shitas are rooted in other shitas of these very same people in other areas of Shas, as we will soon see one that we are familiar with. And this is Rabbi Akiva. Rabbi Akiva, Omer, Kol she yesh lo isha noa b'maisin. Having a wife who is a Baal Asmidos, of course, the famous story of his wife, Rachel, who after 12 years of not seeing her husband, uh, her husband overheard her saying that uh, she would even support another 12 years, and that's exactly what he did. Ashila, why didn't he interrupt and go say hello? Rebetan, I haven't seen you in 12 years. It's a long time. So that, this leads to a lot of different discussions in Ashkafa about marriage and discussion about uh, interruptions in time and continuity. Um, uh, not for now. Five lines from the bottom, Kapayim with Bez, Rabbi Yossi, Omer, Kol Sheyesh, Lo Bez, Akise, Samuch, Le Shulchano. Rabbi Yossi, elsewhere in Shas, also made similar references, and that is that uh, having uh, access to, uh, to a bathroom is considered uh, to be, uh, be Ashirus, a degree of Ashirus. Um, and then that brings us to the end of this mini, um, this mini sugya on Ezu Asher Samech Bechelko, and brings us right back to the sugyas we were learning before about oils and whether or not they are appropriate or not appropriate to be used I look at Neiros on Shabbos, and let's continue. Four lines from the bottom, Kapayim with Beis. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam She'akol Negevid Baruch. Amen. Perfectly done. Thank you. Says the Brisa, Tanya, Rabbi Shimon Omer, Rabbi Shimon Ben Elazar Omer, Ein Madlikin B'Tzari. Tzari is uh, is balsam. It's a type of uh, a type of oil, an extract from something which is now an oil. My Taima. What's the reason why we can why we cannot use sorry? Answers the Gemara. Amar Rabba mitoch sherecho nodev gzer shemi yistapek mimenu because it smells amazing and we're afraid that you may take some of the oil to use it and in taking some of the oil you could lead to the earlier ex, uh, extinguishing of the flame and that's not appropriate. Amar le Abaye turning to the top of Kavav Amaral if Abaye asks lema mar mi pnei off you should have said that the reason why we can't use sorry is because of a different reason, and that is that it's flammable. Take a look at Rashi, Machlok, as Rashi Tos was here. Rashi on the top, Shehu Af, the Nidbak Bekos Lehabais, it could stick, quote unquote, to the walls of the house, Wumadlik as Habayis, and cause for a flame. In other words, it's flammable. But take a look at Tosfos. Tosfos has a different approach here. Tosfos says, why is it that, uh, that what, what is Abaye's comment here, that it is Af, that it is flammable, says Tosfos, um, he's concerned that because it's flammable, therefore a person who's bahul al mamono, he's afraid that his house might burn down. Ah, oh, very good. And we're afraid that he's going to extinguish the flame. So here we have a very, a very interesting um, difference in lambdas between Rashi and Tosos. According to Rashi, 
we have a practical concern. We're afraid you're going to burn your house down. This has nothing to do with halacha per se. It's just not smart. So you can't use sorry. You can't use the balsam oil because we're afraid that it's going to burn your house down. However, Toso says that this is a halachic consideration. It's not a, it's not a, a safety issue. The problem is that because you're bahul al mamono, therefore you might come to do bimachabe, you might come to put out the flame. So there's like a hakira in the styles of thinking of Rashi and Tosos when we learn this Gemara, that uh, when Abaye mentions that it's off, that it's flammable, what, what does it lead to? So Rashi says it leads to danger. Tosos says it leads to halachic violation. So the Gemara says, what do we do with Abaye's question? Rabba said it was because we were afraid that you were going to be mistapek mimenu, that you were going to take the oil and use it for yourself. Abaye says, what about the fact that it's flammable? The Gemara puts the two together. Chad ve'od ka'amar. It is one and the other. They are both very valid reasons. And here is how it, how it is explained by the Gemara. Chad amibneshu af ve'od gzeir shema yistapek mimenu. It is flammable. And as well, uh, we are afraid that you may benefit from it. For those of you who have trouble with your uh, daughters-in-law, uh, you might like this story. And if you are ever frustrated with your daughter-in-law, just whisper under your breath, Shabbos Kavav, Shabbos Kavav. This story uh, should never happen ever, uh, but nevertheless it did. Hahi Chamsa, there was a mother-in-law, de Havas Sinia La Lakalsa, and she hated her daughter-in-law. Not a good start to the story. And remember what we're coming off of, which is that balsam oil is flammable. Very, very bad combination of terms. Amra, Amra, la, the mother-in-law said to the daughter, la, zil, ikshit bimishcha de afarsima. Go and put on some makeup, anoint yourself with the oils of balsam oils. The mother-in-law knows from the Gemara, from Abaye, that it's flammable. So she did. Azla, ikshit, she went and she put on uh, the balsam oil. Kiyasa, when the, when the daughter-in-law got back, Amra, la, zil, isli, shraga. Oh, it's hadlakas neiros. Time to go light the candles. And when she did, Azla, Isla Shraga, she went and she lit a candle in Pachba Nura Ve'ichlasa. She caught fire and she got burned. So that's the end of the story. It's not a very good story. And there's no admonishment. There probably should be some admonishment here. There seemingly isn't, um, other than the obvious, which is that you should not light your daughters in law on fire. But that's what the Gemara tells us this story. It's an extremely flammable uh, oil, and uh, one should be careful not to use it. The Gemara says a pasuk in regards to Nevuzradan. Uh, that after Nevuzradan took over uh, the lands that he conquered, he only left over some people, the Kormim and the Yogmim. What are these people? Kormim, what are they? These are people who would collect balsam oil or the leaves that would lead to balsam oil, the trees and leaves that would lead to it. And they would collect it from Ein Gedi to Ramsa. What were the Yogvim? Um, as I mentioned before this year, before many of you were on, Elu Tzaydei Chilazon. These were the people who would trap the chilazon. They would uh, be the people who would scrape them off of the of the banks or boats or wherever they were connected to be used for, of course, for tcheles. Misulamos shel tzur ve'ad chayfa. They were collected in a channel of sorts of water from these two locations of tzur and chayfa. Of course, uh, we do have a very specific location of where to look for them, and they may well still be there. But halacha uh, lemaisa, there is a discussion in the post game about whether or not it's appropriate to wear. Um, to wear tcheles, the two sides of the coin are as follows. Side number one is that maybe there's a mitzvah del raisa to wear tcheles, or isem also is in the, is in the mail, it's a reference to tcheles, it's not really talking about the tzitzis, so we have a pasuk in the Torah that obligates us to wear tzitzis. Conflicting with that is the shita of Rabbi Yashiv and other poskim that the reason why he holds that uh, the mitzvah of tcheles is not applicable nowadays is because we need to have a misora in regards to the chilazon, and we have been able to replicate through trial and error um, a dyeing that is permanent and a dyeing that is seemingly the appropriate color. Big machlokas uh, over the last century or two as to how to get that done. Uh, there is a way to do it, and it is being sold for a pretty penny. Um, and that's just a discussion of whether or not we need a misora. So what's the harm, according to Rabbi Yashiv? Why would you not just make, just do it? Something the rice of the chumrah. Maybe we should just all be wearing tchelas. So the post can answer that. We also have a conflicting halacha that the color of the strings are supposed to be the same color as the garment. And in cases like that, when we don't have a mesora, it's not appropriate to try and make tcheles because you're just in violation, in violation of a separate iser. Um, and that is why there are two pathways. One is that it's possible that we're, we're going to fulfill a mitzvah del raisa. And the other is that we don't have a mesora. And because we don't have a mesora, we need the color of the strings to be the same as the color of the begin. Let's continue. If we have tevel, 
we have uh, we have oil that is tevel, meaning that it has not had trumos and maestros taken from it. The halacha is you're not allowed to light it during the week. You're not allowed to use it. It's tevel. You're not allowed to use tevel. The answer, chlomar b'shabes, pasha, that you cannot use it for kavod shabbos. You cannot use it for hadlakas neres for shabbos. Kayot sebo. The same is true with the following halacha. In malikin beneft lavan, you cannot use neft lavan, which as well was a very flammable liquid. Bechol the answer, chlomar b'shabes. So ask the gemara. I understand why you're not allowed to use Nef Lavan because it's super flammable. Why are you not allowed to light candles with Tevel Tame? Answers the Gemara, Amar Kra. This Pasuk we saw yesterday. And because we saw this Pasuk yesterday and we were Dorish this Pasuk yesterday, we would have to say that the Drusha was by someone other than the person who gave the Drusha yesterday. Let's see how today's uh, Baal Machaber is going to give this Drusha. Amar Kra, how do we know that using Tevel Tame for Hadlakas Neros is not allowed? Answers the Gemara. Va'ani hine no sati l'cha es mishmeres trumosai. Uh, you're the trumosai in the plural. I'm giving to you the, to protect my trumos, multiple. Betray v'shte trumos hakasu v'ndaber. The Pasuk is plural, trumosai, and it's referencing two different uh, types of truma. Achas truma tehora, ve'achas truma tme. One of them is tahor and one of them is tame. Ma truma tehora, ein l'chaba elami sha'as harama ve'elech. Just like by truma tehora, you're not allowed to use it until you've been mafresh, um, trumos and maestros, until there was harama that you you raised away from it that which needed to be separated. Same is true by truma tmeya. The fact that it's tmeya doesn't mean that you're putter from trumos and maestros. It may be limited, limited as to how the Kohen can use it. Maybe he won't be able to eat it. Maybe he'd only be able to burn it, but get hana from it. But you can't take that away from him. But you as a czar are not allowed to eat that food um, until it's been, even if it's been nifrash. And if it hasn't been nifrash yet, then it's tevel. So therefore, the Gemara says, we understand by the Neft Lavan because it's flammable, and by Tevel Tame, the reason why you're not allowed to use it is because um, it, it still requires that there should be a half Russia, even if it is Tame. We're now going to go through a number of shitas that are found in the Tanoim in regards to different aspects of Hadlakas Neros. It'll take us uh, to the bottom of the page before we start our sugya of Tuma Vitara. Gufa. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar Omer Ema Likin Bitsari, we're not allowed to use the balsam oil as mentioned. That the um, the tsari, he's just defining it for us. The tsari is the sap of a balsam tree. Rabbi Shmuel Omer Kol Hayot Min Hayot Ein Madlikin Bo. Any derivatives of trees, says Rabbi Shmuel, we are not allowed to use. Rabbi Shmuel ben Baroka Omer Ein Madlikin Al Bayot Min Hapri. We're only allowed to use that which is extracted from fruits. Because they typically light very well. Rabbi Tarfon Omer, Ein Malik and Alba Shemin Zayis Bilvat. And we mentioned this yesterday, the big Chumra of Rabbi, of Rabbi Tarfon. This is quoted in our Mishnah as the last sheet in the Mishnah on Kavdal and Bez, that you can only light with Shemin Zayis. Omad Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri al Ragla. Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri was in the base manager. She heard this din of Rabbi Tarfon. He stood up on his feet and he said, What is going on here? The Omar, Ma Yasu Anshe Bavel, Shein Lahem Ela Shemin Shum Shemin. Rabbi Tarfon, you're saying they can only use olive oil. What about in Bavil when they only have sesame sesame oil? In Madai, they only have uh, they only have oil from that's derived from a nut. That they uh, they derive it from radishes. Some of the seeds of radishes are composed of up to 15% oil. It's a significant amount of oil. That's how they would do the extraction. They'd press the seeds. What about the people who live there? They only have the neft, the, that, and that, according to some, we're not allowed to use, as we've discussed. According to others, we'll see soon that you are allowed to use. Therefore, Rabbi Yochanan ben Nuri, We only follow the limitations that are found in the Mishnah of that which we are not allowed to light. You are not allowed to be more restrictive than the Chachamim, Rabbi Tarfon, and your din of only using Shem and Zayis Bilvad is an unacceptable din. Umadlikin a halacha is, according to this Tanakama, that we, one is allowed to light with fish oil and with uh, the derivative of pitch, uh, tar. Rabbi Shimon Shizuri Omer Malikin Bishemin Pakuo Suvaneft, that we are allowed to uh, make uh, use something that actually looks like a watermelon. Uh, I wrote on the side of my notes what it's called. There was a type of, um, of, of fruit that looked like watermelon called bitter apple. 
I'm, I'm not a botanist, but I, I don't even know what it looks like. They said other that it looks similar. And this is the type of thing that they were using to extract oil, uveneft, and something that is flammable. Sumcho somer kolayot semina basar, anything that comes from an animal of flesh, ein madlikin bo ela b'shem and dogit. So if you look up a few lines right after it says the Ella with the little mark there, it says that we're allowed to use fish oil. And then Sumcha says that you can use fish oil. Mm. So Tanakama is the same as Sumcha. Sumcha is the Tanakama. It's the same exact Shita. Answers the Gemara. Ika beinav de Rabbarona Amar Rab. Like we saw yesterday, the Shita of Rabbarona Amar Rab was that we are allowed to add something to fish oil. Um, and that makes it permissible to use. It was Chelev uh, Mehutach and the, the innards of a fish that were all uh, melted together, that would be permissible only if you added oil. That's the machlokas between Sumchus and Tanakama. However, we don't know who holds what. Below Masayme, it is inconclusive as to whether or not the Chachamim hold that it's mutter if you add oil, or Sumchus holds that it is mutter if you add oil, with the other opinion being the dissenting opinion. Now we're going to start learning a sugya of Tuma Vitara. The sugya of Tuma Vitara, um, there are certain aspects of it that are not logical, and the Shiurim are one of those things. Um, you know, when we talk about touching something, the Tuma Vitara should not be viewed as, uh, you know, something contagious per se, in that if I touch something, that it automatically becomes Tame, because there are some things that are Makabal Tuma, and there are some things that are not Makabal Tuma. This leniency comes up in Hilchos Nida. Um, I've spoken to Rabbi First, Rabbi Robinson, and other Rabbanim for couples who are having a very difficult time navigating the Shevanikim. So instead of just wearing Tachtonim Levanim, just instead of wearing white undergarments, there's also a recommendation to wear a sanitary napkin, to wear a pad, because that's not Makabal Tuma. And then even if there were to be a droplet of blood that was larger than the size that would have triggered a halachic issue, but because that garment is not Makabal Tuma, because the, the sanitary napkin is not Makabal Tuma, so it doesn't cause for a problem. But it does let a woman know if she's having a, a significant flow, one that would ruin her Sheva Nikim one way or the other. So there is a very important distinction to be made between that which is Makabal Tuma and that which is not Makabal Tuma. And we're going to see now uh, some parameters having nothing to do with Hilchos Nida, that's just an application. We're going to see some parameters about which garments uh, and which sizes of garments and which materials of garments are subject to becoming Makabal Tuma versus that which is not Makabal Tuma. Let's get started. Three lines from the bottom, Kavava Madala. Tanya, the Brysa says, Rav Shimon ben Elazar Omer, Kolayote mina eitz, ein bo mishum shalosh al shalosh. The halacha is that anything that is derived from a tree that is then made into a fabric, even if it is three by three, and here shalosh, in numbers, the gender seems to be reversed. So shlosha, we would have normally said is female. This is actually male. Shalosh, and it's referring to an etzba. Shalosh etzbos is something that is three finger widths by three finger width. Let's call it an inch and a half by an inch and a half, a very, very small piece of, piece of cloth. And the halacha is that if it is, even if it's three by three, says Rav Shimon ben Elazar, uh, if it is a derivative of a tree, and even if it's three by three etzbos, the small shear, Allah is that it's not subject to Tuma Vitara, and therefore, because it's not Mechabal Tuma, therefore, Umesachach in Bo, we're allowed to use it for Schach, Chutz mi Pishtan. However, when it comes to Pishtan, that's not true, that is subject to Tuma. Okay, Shita number one, let's take a look at a couple of Rashis. Uh, Rashi Dibur Hamaschil, seven lines, eight lines from the bottom of the page, Ein Bo Mishum Shalosh Al Shalosh, the Kabal Tuma Begimel Etzbaos, referencing the Shir that I mentioned. Yote Mina Eitz. Uh, anything that has these fabrics that can be derived from them. This would be a reference to hemp, which, of course, we are familiar with as something that can be made into garments. It can be woven into a garment. If that was made into a garment that's three by three at Spos, that has not Makabal Tuma. And as well, Tzemer Gefen, uh, using things from that from that particular tree, Masacha Chinbo, we're allowed to use these things for um, for Schach, Sukkah, we're not allowed to, to um, have schach that is makabal tuma. We have to make sure that it is appropriately not makabal tuma. And therefore, the pishtan is the exception to the rule. Take a look at the last Rashi. Chutzmi pishtan, the yalfin and the kaman, the ikri eitu makabal tumas negoim. Afilu unin shabo, even the little strips that are sticking out, that would be, uh, that would be uh, a subject to uh, Tuma. So therefore, again, to review, of Shimon ben Elazar holds that anything that is derived from a tree, even if it's made into a fabric that's gimel al gimel at spos, three finger breadths by three finger breadths, Allah is that it's not makabal Tuma with the exception of Pishta. Omar Abaye, Abaye says, now turning to the top of Kavav Amadez, he says, this, this Shita of Rav Shimon ben Elazar, we have another Shita that's very similar to it. And here is how it works. Rav Shimon ben Elazar, Vitana de Bey Rabbi Shmuel Amru Dabar Echad. Abaye was of the opinion that Rashim ben Elazar, 
and the Shita of Rabbi Shmuel that they held the same thing. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar had Amran. Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar holds that that which we just learned, the din on the bottom of the previous summit about Gimel al Gimel, that by trees there is no Gimel al Gimel, with the exception of Pishtan. That's the Shita had Amran, that's the Shita of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar. And Tana de Rabbi Shmuel Maihi, what was his Shita? Answers the Gemara, the Shita of Rabbi Shmuel, which is similar to the Shita of Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar, according to Abai, is as follows. The Tana de Rabbi Shmuel, Hoel Venemru Begadim Betorah Stam, because it says first, uh, in regards to Nagaim, it says Begadim, and then it circles back in detail, Uparat Lecha Kasu Be'echad Ben Semeru Pishtim, and then it's a Klal and a Prat. So says the Gemara, Ma Lehalon Semer Upishtim, Avkol Semer Upishtim. Therefore, these two particular materials are considered to be a garment as Begadim as it relates to Tumas Nagaim, namely that they are Mikabal Tuma, and that seems very similar to the Shita of Rav Shimon Ben Elazar. It says, uh, says, um, says Rava, absolutely not. I don't agree with you at all. And now we're going to be introduced to another shear with a slight nuance in language. Rava Amar, I don't agree with you. Rav Shimon ben Elazar and Tana Debe Rabbi Shmuel do not hold the same thing. Where is their difference? Rava Amar, Shlosha al Shlosha b'shar begadim ika benayhu. Shlosha al Shlosha, different than Shalosh al Shalosh. When we see Shalosh al Shalosh, because of the uh, of the the nekeva status of that, that is a reference to the etzba. All body parts are considered to be in the in the nekeva. So therefore, shalosh refers to etzba. And here, it's shlosha al shlosha in the masculine, uh, which is going to be a reference to uh, tefach. Shlosha al shlosha, three tefachim by three tefachim. That's approximately one foot by one foot. A garment that's about that size. Sometimes if you get one of these uh, garments that clean your glasses, they can sometimes be approximately that size. That's a good example of a garment or a handkerchief. So those would be a reasonable examples. But Rava says that even though it's true that both Rav Shem and Ben Elazar and Tana Debe Rabbi Shmuel agree that Semer Upishtan, that these materials are subject to Tuma, but they still are not exactly the same in their Shita, in that when they have a garment that is Gimel Al Gimel Tfachim, one foot by one foot, and Bishar Begadim, with other clothes, not with these two materials, Ika Beinaihu, that's the difference between them. Dereb Shimon ben Elazar Isle, he holds that these garments, even though it's not Semer Pishtan, but because they have a shear of Gimel al Gimel Tfachim, it's a foot by a foot, therefore Isle, they are Makabal Tuma, and Latana, the Bey Rabbi Shmuel, Lesle, he holds that these garments are not subject to Tuma. What do we see from this whole story? We started with the Bryce of Rav Shimon ben Elazar. We tried to equate Rav Shimon ben Elazar to uh, Tana Debe Rabbi Shmuel. And there we saw Machlokas Abai and Rava. Abai said they're one and the same. Rava said they don't agree because the initial sheet of, Rabbi, uh, of the uh, Rav Shimon ben Elazar holds that once a garment reaches Gimel Tvachim al Gimel Tvachim, then it is now Mikabal Tuma, whereas Rabbi Shmuel doesn't agree to that. What do we see that everyone agrees to? To Kule Alma Mihas. However, we see that everyone holds that Shalosh al Shalosh Betzem Herupish de Mitma bin Agaim. So, what do we see that both Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Shimon ben Elazar both agree that if you have something that's Shalosh al Shalosh, it's both, and it's made out of Semer, semer it's made out, not Semer, it's made out of Pishtan, the Allah is it's Mikabal Tuma Minolan. Where, does, where do they get this shita from? Granted, everybody agrees, but where do they get this shita from? So answers the Gemara as follows. The Tanya, the Pasuk said, the, the Brisa tells us a Pasuk. Beged. The Pasuk says, by Nigaim, I'll read the Pasuk in full. Beha Beged, ki yichye vo nega tzoras, beveged semer o beveged pishtim. That's what the Pasuk says. Speaking about tzoras, that's the full Pasuk. So it says, Beged, eini yela Beged. I only know about garments, but only a, a garment of a particular, maybe any garment. Shalosh al shalosh minayin. How do I know that the minimum shear is three by three tvachim? Answers the Gemara, the Gemara, Lomar Veha Beged. The first word of the Pasuk is Veha Beged. And because of the extra letters of Veha, I know it's not any Beged. It has to be a Beged of a minimum shear. And it has to be that minimum shear of Shalosh al Shalosh Etzbos. Says the Gemara, why did you say that the minimum shear has to be three by three Etzbos? The aim of the Rabos, Shlosh al Shlosh? Maybe it's coming to teach me, no, not three by three Etzbos, but three by three Tvachim. Why are you saying the smaller shear? It should be the larger one. Answers the Gemara. That would be obvious. Without the drasha, we would have thought that any fibers would have become tummy. And if with the fibers they would have become tummy, all the more so if you make a full bega that's uh, gimel al gimel tvachim, for sure that's the case. It's almost too obvious. And therefore the Gemara said, assumed that we had to only learn about the gimel al gimel at spos and not the gimel al gimel tvachim. Says the Gemara, if you could make a kalvachomer, 
Shalosh al shalosh nami lesi bekal v'chomer. I even, of course, I could learn three by three t'vachim. I even could have learned three by three at Zbos, the much smaller shear. I also could have learned that in the kal v'chomer from the same place of shesti v'arev. If the threads would, could potentially become tummy without a drasha, kal v'chomer, that a three by three at Zbos would become tummy. So why are you saying that it should have been the larger shear? Maybe it's the smaller begit. Says the Gemara, Ella, it must be that the following. Shlosha al shlosha de chazu bein la ashir and bein la anim asi bekal v'chomer the three by three and again with the hay at the end the three by three tefachim which is fit as a garment both for the rich and for the poor there we make a kal v'chomer however shalosh al shalosh la anim hu de chazian la shirim lo chazian therefore lo asi bekal v'chomer but when a garment is only gimel al gimel et bos, that is not fit for uh, for an asher. It's only fit for an ani, and therefore we would not make a kal v'chomer there. Just to step off the page for 30 seconds, a fascinating idea. It seems that a kal v'chomer is made only when it fits more people. Logically, that doesn't make any sense. A kal v'chomer should be um, just very linear logic. If it's true in X and Y is greater than X, then it should be true in Y. The, the concept of Kal V'chomer should have no relevance to the applicability of the, of the Kal V'chomer. It's just pure logic. Yet we see the Gemara is weaving in uh, a preference, a pecking order of when and where we would make a Kal V'chomer. Where a garment is fit to be used both by an Ani and an Ashir, there we say a Kal V'chomer. But when it's only a smaller garment that's not fit for an Ashir, it's only fit for an Ani, there we would not say a Kal V'chomer. Just good to have in the back of our minds when we come across Kal V'chomer. Remember the Yud Gimel Midos, Shator Nidreshes Pahin that we say in Rabbi Shmuel every day. So there we, we speak about Kal V'chomer. Kal V'chomer is one of the 13 ways that we are able to make a Drasha Del Raisa. It, it has the capacity to extract a Din Del Raisa. And here the Gemara is just kind of putting, uh, putting the brakes on using a Kal V'chomer everywhere where there's a Kal and a Chomer. It doesn't apply everywhere. It only applies under certain circumstances. Says the Gemara, so what is the reason why we made this distinction between three tfachim and three etzbaos? Taima de kasve vikra is because it says it in the Pasuk, lo kasve kra, lo gamrinan bekalvachomer. I would not have been able to use the kalvachomer. The Pasuk therefore teaches me about gimel al gimel tfachim, gimel al gimel etzbaos. The ema, maybe you should say not like that. Maybe you should not say that the Pasuk is teaching me about gimel al gimel etzbaos in regards to the material of uh, pishtan. Maybe I could have learned the din having nothing to do with this material. I could have learned about Sha'ar begadim, not flax, not the pishtan, but maybe something that's three by three tfachim. I could have learned to there. Says the Gemara, you can't do that. Omar Kra, beget semer upishtim, beget semer upishtim in, midiacharin lo. You cannot extract, extrapolate from here to any case of Sha'ar begadim that it would be makabal tumah. The garment cannot be makabal tum unless it's semer pishtim. Otherwise, it cannot. No other materials are subject to this. Says, says the Gemara of Eima, ki imut mishalosh al shalosh, aval shlosh al shlosh mitma. Maybe you would say that in the case that the Pasuk excludes the three by three at spouse, uh, that it's not tame, but maybe the shlosh al shlosh is going to become tame by the semer pishtim. Says the Gemara, no, you're not allowed to say that either. Because tremi utek tzivi, there were two exclusions in the pasuk. Beget semer o pishtim, chad lemiute mishalo shal shalosh, bechad lemiute mishlo shal shlosha. One to teach me that each of them are, are potentially subject to the uh, potential of being makabel tuma. That brings us to our stopping point for tonight, Ula Rava. Um, today is Wednesday, which means that tomorrow night is going to be our Shabbos Hagadol Drasha. Rabbi Robinson, Rabbi Shechter is giving a share, I think, at eight. Uh, I'm not exactly sure. Look in the WhatsApp message. It was just posted. Rabbi Robinson is giving a Shabbos Agol Drasha at 9. Um, and he said that he should be done in time for us to do Daf Yomi. Thursday nights, we're going to do a, uh, a blot and a half. And that will bring us uh, toward the bottom of Daf Kav Ches, Amad Aleph. Um, and these blot are getting a drop longer. Don't worry, they're not brachos long, but they're just a little longer as they would be for Shabbos. Uh, but we will certainly get it done. Hope you guys all have a wonderful night. Thank you for joining What time do you...